Mr. Joseph, good evening, and thank you for sharing your time with RTV21 tonight. Thank you for having me on here. I've come to you from here in Bratislava at the GlobeSec conference, where uh, soon, my understanding is, both Prime Minister Kurti and President Vucic will be here, along with Miroslav Lychak and others, uh, other also officials from around the region. So you are going to have opportunity to send some messages across to both of them. I hope I will have an opportunity. Uh, I've already tried to send a message uh, in Twitter on a Saturday uh, after the first uh, disturbing events. And that's a message that also goes to my government, the U.S. government. Please. Mr. Joseph, Kosovo is going from one crisis to another, and this time with mayors in the north. It seems that the clashes between Kosovo and Serbia are getting stronger, despite an agreement reached a few months ago. How serious do you see this current situation? Look, it's serious. Anytime you have violence, it's very serious, because the atmosphere becomes charged and it becomes uh, intensely political and it becomes much more difficult then to move back uh, towards the processes that, that allow people to live their lives normally and for progress to occur. So uh, it's serious. Uh, this is serious. I saw today the U.S. Ambassador, Ambassador Hovenir, uh, strongly condemned the uh, actions of the Serb uh, protesters there, including uh, wounding K-4 soldiers. Now, this is something that I mentioned uh, on Twitter on Saturday that I remember back in 2011 when uh, the Kosovo Special Police were sent to the north. And this resulted in a Kosovar Albanian special police officer being shot and killed by a Serb assailant. And tensions uh, immediately skyrocketed, and ultimately there were Serb barricades for months, and uh, K-4 soldiers were wounded. So it's uh, disappointing for me, a dozen years later, to see similar situations uh, uh, playing out, especially when there is the backdrop of an agreement, an agreement that you mentioned, difficult to implement, but a very important agreement nonetheless. Please. Mr. Joseph, Serbia placed its army on the level of uh, a combat readiness. Kosovo seems not to be ready to give up um, on its, as it called, establishment of constitutionality throughout the country. Are we going to see even more tensions around? Well, look, let's hope, of course, that the process will be restored for tensions to calm. Uh, but that's going to take some political uh, decisions. Uh, and hopefully even there could be some conversations here in Bratislava. I don't know that for a fact. I'm uh, a participant and I'm not part of those conversations. But hopefully uh, uh, officials can take advantage of the fact that you will have uh, Prime Minister Kurti and President Vucic here and that hopefully uh, there can be some urgent conversations about getting back uh, to some stability. But we have to remember here that uh, the, the backdrop comes, there's an agreement. Uh, Serbia, uh, from the outset, uh, President Vucic has tried to undermine this agreement. It's a, a very important agreement. Kosovo has obligations under that agreement, and so does uh, Serbia. And so does the European Union. And uh, each of those parties has to fulfill their commitments. That includes Kosovo, that includes this question of the association, uh, and that process has to continue and uh, to uh, move and, and establish an association that is completely in accordance with Kosovo's constitution and does not uh, in any way threaten its functionality, sovereignty, or territorial integrity. But that's, that's the context here, but of course, uh, we're in a situation now that is uh, very difficult, and we need to examine the uh, responsibility of each side and what the United States and its European Union partners can do. 
please. So you are expecting that Kosovo and Serbia, President Vucic and Prime Minister Kurti will discuss the mayor's issue once again in Brussels or elsewhere and decide about uh, their future? I, I certainly hope that there'll be some communication here in Bratislava. I'm in Bratislava, I'm not in Brussels. This uh, GlobeSec conference takes place here in Bratislava. It's uh, uh, held by the organization GlobeSec, and you will have leaders from around the region who will be here. So you, you will have uh, leaders from Bosnia-Herzegovina, from uh, Montenegro, from uh, North Macedonia, uh, from Croatia, you will have many uh, leaders here. So uh, they will be here, and I don't, I can't predict anything, but I certainly hope that there will be uh, efforts to try to utilize this opportunity and, and to come to some formula to restore calm. Look, we have to remember, one of the things I warned about in my uh, Twitter thread on Saturday is I remember that once you have a fatality uh, like that. It changes the dynamics uh, immediately. It's a tragedy for the family and it changes the dynamics and it makes it extremely difficult uh, to restore calm and to uh, have benefit. And we have to remember another thing, that this comes at a time when President Vucic is under great domestic pressure at home, uh, it, these massive protests, and this is exactly what he wants. President Vucic wants this kind of disturbance in Kosovo so he can pretend to be the great uh, protector of, uh, of Kosovo and, and of Serbs. And uh, th this is exactly the type of uh, dynamic that uh, has to be avoided. And unfortunately, uh, in my view, obviously, Serbia bears the larger responsibility here. President Vucic did not give the signal after Ohrid, like he should have, for Kosovo Serbs to go back to Kosovo institutions. He did not take that opportunity. But um, uh, Prime Minister Kurti also, as I've written, also shares in the responsibility. He, he was uh, specifically cautioned in a message from the United States, the great friend of Kosovo uh, and its quint allies on 18th of May, caution about uh, the steps that the uh, and how to approach this very delicate issue of of having mayors go into the north when the elections, uh, let's face it, they were a failure. Um, now Serbia bears a major responsibility for why those elections were a failure, but they were a failure nonetheless, and that means that uh, a Kosovo a government has to proceed very carefully and work with its uh, uh, U.S. Um, close, very close friends in the United States and others. And I say one other thing here as a former official in Kosovo, as the former deputy head of mission in Kosovo, any Kosovo government, not just this Kosovo government, any Kosovo government must coordinate its actions when going into the north, actions that can contribute to tensions, must coordinate with K4, in particular also ULEX and friends like the United States. It's an obligation because it is K4 ultimately that has the responsibility for maintaining security. And no one has the right to take steps that will create tensions and then turn to K4 and say, well, look, now it's your job to uh, take care of everything. That's that, uh, in my view, that was irresponsible of Prime Minister Kurti, but that doesn't mean he has equal responsibility with uh, President Vucic. President Vucic has more responsibility. But, but, uh, that, but Prime Minister Kurti also bears responsibility. He had the, uh, the proximate responsibility, the immediate responsibility of, um, of, of, of respecting what the U.S. and its friends and supporters of Kosovo uh, wanted uh, to do some restraint. So now we're in a situation that it's, uh, this is very bad. Uh, as in 2011, 2012, K-4 soldiers also have been wounded. They were wounded then. I remember that. I remember clearly. They were shot in, in 2011. I believe uh, they were K-4 from Germany. They were shot by, by Serbs. And today, I understand that uh, K-4 soldiers have been wounded. So this is uh, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but 
uh, Prime Minister Kurti also shares responsibility. I say again, President Vucic has more responsibility, more here. He's a, a destructive character, uh, President Vucic. He's uh, tried to undermine this agreement, a very important agreement with Kosovo. He refuses to put EU sanctions on Russia as he's obligated. He sends uh, Alexander Vulin to Moscow to strategize on security very dangerously with Russia. So no one is here. I'm not comparing uh, Kurti and Vucic. I'm not comparing. But I, I will say again, Prime Minister Kurti also bears responsibility. But uh, aren't, here in the aren't both sides trying to avoid or to halt the implementation of the agreement reached in Ohrid and in Brussels earlier? Well, you know, this is, uh, if that is the case, that's very unfortunate because uh, that agreement, it's not perfect. I know it's not perfect. I've written, I've, I've explained, I've written for years. I know exactly the dynamics here. The dynamics here are, are with the, the four uh, NATO non-recognizing countries, Greece, Romania, Slovakia, and Spain. And I even today, I want you to know, I uh, asked here publicly at Globsec in Bratislava, I asked the foreign minister of Slovakia about recognizing uh, uh, Kosovo. Now, now, obviously, these kind of tensions in the north, of course, uh, make it so to ask such a question is not as credible as it, as it would be. But I've always been the believer that that's the uh, most important case here. And this agreement, this uh, uh, Ohrid agreement, is very important because it contains a form, uh, a de facto form of recognition, and that can create a dynamic for Kosovo's recognition. It won't, it's not guaranteed. Uh, all of us, including me, have to continue to raise this issue in, and, and get the United States government to ask these countries. My suggestion is, is that Ukraine should recognize Kosovo. And we saw Ukraine did a forward step in Council of Europe. And I just here also met the Secretary General of the Council of Europe. I just met, met her here today. There's many important officials here uh, uh, in, in Bratislava. So, but this type of tension and this type of conflict does not serve Kosovo's interests. This does not advance Kosovo's prospects uh, in, in, in getting what it wants and getting what Kosovo deserves and needs. Uh, so this, this was a mistake. I will say that very clearly. This was a mistake by Prime Minister Kurti to, to go into this trap that is benefiting uh, President Vucic at a time when President Vucic is very vulnerable. Please. Mr. Joseph, last week, hours after the first riots in the north, there was a strong warning from the U.S. State Department towards Kosovo through the American Secretary of State, Mr. Blinken. Is Kosovo facing serious con consequences in its bilateral relations with the United States? The answer is obvious. Uh, if Secretary of State Blinken says there are severe consequences, then that's the answer, only answer anybody needs, uh, is, is that it, it, this is coming from the highest level of the State Department. Uh, uh, Tony Blinken, uh, who I know and who I respect. So this is this is very serious, you, and uh, and that's uh, not good for Kosovo. That Kosovo um, uh, should always respect its great friend and work maximally uh, and and coordinate very closely. Friends in the U.S. Embassy, Ambassador Hovenier, who is a friend of Kosovo, and uh, and the State Department. So this is not good, in my opinion, as I wrote on Twitter on Saturday, the U.S. Uh, went too far in saying that, that there will be consequences for the relationship. I don't believe that the State Department should have said that. I think that was going too far, even though Prime Minister Kurti made a mistake and deserved to be criticized by, by the United States. This went too far because the U.S. does not take any type of similar um, uh, uh, criticism towards President Vucic and does not hold him accountable when he is much more responsible for this situation and for instability in the region, not just in Kosovo, but in Montenegro, you in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, Mr. Joseph, you are saying it went too far. 
did miss yes. the court event too far in not uh, listening what the advices are from the United States and other European partners? Yes, yes. This is all contained in my short Twitter thread on Saturday that anyone can see if they just look on Twitter at Edward P. Joseph. I uh, use a middle initial P like uh, Pristina, Edward P. Joseph. So if you look that, you can see my Twitter thread. And yes, this was a mistake. I, I say this again. This was a mistake by Prime Minister Corti uh, to uh, not listen to the advice. Remember, there was a, a, a clear statement by the Quint on 18th of May cautioning, cautioning about this. Um, I've been in Kosovo. I, I was in Kosovo in 2011 when uh, a different Kosovo government, uh, Kosovo government then led by Hashim Thaci, uh, they sent a, uh, a special police into the north, uncoordinated with K4. It resulted in a Kosovo Albanian special police officer being shot and killed uh, there. And we had uh, uh, very difficult times for months after that. So th this, remember, this is very important to, to remember, any Kosovo uh, official, Prime Minister Kurti and President Osmani, and I hope President Osmani will also be, uh, that she should, will be here, a voice of responsibility and of reason. There, there is an obligation of any Kosovo government to coordinate with K4. K4 has the responsibility for ultimate responsibility in, uh, for security, also coordinating with ULEX, also coordinating with the U.S. Embassy and other uh, key partners of Kosovo. So uh, Prime Minister Kurti did not do that. That was a mistake, and, uh, and that was an irresponsible act on his part. But my point is that doesn't make him the same as President Vucic. That's my point. He's not equally responsible. Kosovo is not equally responsible as is Serbia in this case, and that's why I thought the U.S. criticism, it was uh, Prime Minister Kurti deserved to be publicly criticized uh, by the State Department, but the statement that relations will be affected, uh, it was not correct, it was going too far, because there's no similar criticism of uh, President Vucic, who is doing much more damage to U.S. interests uh, than is Kosovo, which is aligned with the United States, and then Serbia, which is supporting Russia in this terrible war against Ukraine. Please. And let me ask you, Mr. Joseph, are these latest tensions in the North opening a wide door for an association with executive powers, with Serbia insisting to protect Serbs in Kosovo after all what happened there? Well, I tell you, the fact that you even ask this question as a respected journalist in Kosovo suggests how, how serious and, and what a, a mistake this was to not listen to the United States. The fact that you ask this question, uh, uh, even that you have to, that you're considering such a, a, a possibility just shows that this was a terrible mistake. Prime Minister Kurti should not have done this. Uh, uh, he should have stayed and coordinated very carefully with, with K4 and the US. Um, but if you ask my opinion of the answer, I do not believe the result of this will be a, an association with executive powers. I do not believe that because I believe the U.S. gave its promise, its firm commitment. Uh, there was the, the article written in Cohaditore by Derek Cholet and Gabriel Escobar, and they made it clear uh, what the limitations would be on the powers of the uh, Association of Serb Majority uh, Municipalities. And the U.S., I, I believe, will keep its promise and has to keep its promise no matter uh, of what this happened. But your question suggests that Belgrade will try to exploit this and try to say, oh, look, you know, we need more. And, it, uh, th and that's why I wrote in my Twitter thread on uh, Saturday at Edward P. Joseph, which anyone can read, widely shared, it was widely shared, um, is that this makes it harder to, to get to that. And I know these are not easy decisions, but I'm hopeful Prime Minister Kurti and President Osmani will look at Kosovo's strategic interests. Very important. Do not look at any political calculation. Look at Kosovo's strategic interests. And the interests 
lie in aligning closely and carefully with the United States, expressing Kosovo's concerns. Kosovo has every right to express its concerns about how this uh, agreement, um, Okrit agreement, is being implemented. Has every right, Kosovo and Prime Minister Kurti have every right to ask uh, uh, and insist on a very careful sequence of implementation where Kosovo fulfills obligations and Serbia also fulfills obligations and the EU fulfills its own obligations. And in my opinion, as I've written, the EU should register this important agreement with the United Nations and, and take that step and show Serbia that this is in fact uh, a very serious document and registered at the United Nations and it does in fact have a legally binding character. So that's it, but I do not believe in the end that there will be an association with uh, executive powers. This would be, of course, repeating the mistake of Bosnia-Herzegovina and Republic of Srpska, and we see the disaster with uh, every day with uh, Milorad Dodik. Please. Edward Joseph, thank you very much indeed for talking to us today. You're welcome.